It's the spring of 1995. I'm 14 years old, and I'm at the gala of the San Martin de Tours Catholic High School for Girls in my hometown of Buenos Aires, Argentina. And I'm about to tell Clara, my best friend, that I'm madly in love with her, and I want to be her boyfriend. And I know she's going to say yes, not because she had shown any signs, but because that night before going to the party, I was at my friend's house, and my friend had a magic gate ball. And so I asked. <laughs> And so I asked the Magic Gate Ball if she would say yes, and the Magic Gate Ball said, definitely. <laughs> so towards the end of the party, um, we are talking, and, 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 and I say, uh, so uh, we've been friends for quite a long time, don't you think? And she goes, yes, we've been friends for quite a long time, I think. <laughs> so. Don't you think it's about time we become something more than just friends? I mean, do you want to be my girlfriend? And before I got my answer, her friend shows up, grabs Clara and goes, my mom is here, we have to go. And they get lost in the crowd, leaving me behind without the answer, without the answer that I had been waiting for a whole year to get. And especially because this was the third time that I had tried expressing my feelings in that year. <laughs> I saw Clara for the first time a year before that, uh, when I caught a glimpse of her at a party at a friend's house, and I thought that she really looked like this actress in TV in Argentina that I really liked. And then when I saw her again, I realized they didn't look the same. I mean, they did look the same. They looked the same, the same way that William Dafoe and Christopher Walken looked the same. I didn't talk to her that day because I was very shy in those days. I was this little nerd and I didn't talk to her, so it took me a whole week until I saw her again at another party. And I finally came up with the courage and the nerve to go talk to her. And before I did, my good friend Maxi was already talking to her and they hit it off right away. Some days later, I'm, uh, we are at a friend's house hanging out and Maxi and Clara go out on the balcony and I know something's gonna happen. Something's definitely gonna happen. Something's gonna happen, I gotta do something about it. So what do I do? In those days, Wayne's World, The Mask, and Days Ventura were really popular. And every kid who was an idiot like me was trying to be like Mike Myers and Jim Carrey in life all the time in real life. So this was finally my opportunity to put that to good use and do something with it. So I spent as much time as I could on the other side of the balcony window, pulling up my shirt and putting my nipples against the window, going, Cassandra, Cassandra, going, ah, 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 doing all the things in those movies, but nothing worked. And that day, that day, I saw Clara become my friend's girlfriend. Clara lived really close to our school, so every day after class, Maxi would go away for her at the park across the street from her house. And I was a really good friend, so I went with him every day to show support, of course. <laughs> and that's how I started becoming close to Clara and becoming friends with her. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> Couple months after, Clara breaks up with Maxi. And I'm like, this is my chance. This is finally my chance. So after class, I go wait for her at the park across the street from her house to express my feelings. And when I get there, Clara is already talking to the infamous Nacho. <laughs> now, Nacho was very different from Maxi and I. Nacho was a bad boy, which today, 20 years later, means he's just a loser. <laughs> Fucking nerds win, man. Here's the thing. Nacho had dated Clara before Maxi, and when he found out about them, he decided to do something about it, and that's how he ended up before me at the park that day. But I wasn't gonna give up, because by now I had been promoted to best friend, and I was closer to Clara than ever, and I just needed to wait for another chance, sometime in the future. A Couple months later, I'm at a party and I run into one of Nacho's friends. He was also a bad boy, and today he's not a loser, but fuck him anyway. <laughs> And he goes, um, so now that Clara and Nacho broke up, are you gonna do something about it? And inside of me, part of me was like, <laughs> they broke up? How come I didn't know? How come nobody told me anything about it? How come I, I need to do something about it? Oh my God. But the other half was like, how does he know I'm in love with her? God damn it. No one is supposed to know. But on the outside, I was like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever, cool, man, whatever. 
So a couple weeks later, I'm at the gala at the San Martina Tours Catholic High School for Girls in my hometown of Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I just told Clara, my best friend, that I'm madly in love with her and I want to be her boyfriend. And before I got my answer, her friend picked her up and took her away from me, leaving me behind with no answer. And then in two seconds, they were lost in the crowd. So I get up and I run after them and I catch up to them before they reach the exit and I grab Clara by the, the arm and I try to get my impossible answer and I go... <laughs> We are a comedy team. <laughs> Best timing ever. And I go, so? And she goes, yes. And because we were Catholic and Catholics like to wait, a week later we had our first kiss, which was also my first kiss ever. And it was weird and awkward because she opened her mouth and I didn't. So. <laughs> It kind of felt like kissing into a hole. <laughs> and then, whenever we made out, we didn't use our tongues because we didn't know we were supposed to use tongues. So we felt like two fish giving mouth to mouth to each other. And it was like really strange. And you know, it didn't matter because we were in love and mostly because it was meant to be because the magic gate ball said, definitely, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>